Today we're going to come out of the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 20. And this is from the King James. It says, Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. And the devotion for today is called Do It Yourself Misery. Some people just can't figure out why life has dealt them such a miserable hand. They see others around them enjoying life, and that only adds to their misery. They're convinced that, hor that their horrible lot in this world is a plot by others to keep them down. In truth, misery is always self-concocted. Here's a surefire recipe for misery printed in the Gospel Her Herald. Think about yourself. Talk about yourself. Use I as often as possible. Mirror yourself continually in the opinion of others. Listen greedily to what people say about you. Be suspicious. Expect to be appreciated. Be jealous and envious. Be sensitive to slights. Never forgive criticism. Trust nobody but yourself. Insist on consideration and the proper respect. Demand agreement with your own views on everything. Sulk if people are not grateful to you for favors shown them. Never forget a service you may have rendered. Be on the lookout for a good time for yourself. Shirk your duties if possible. Do as little as possible for others. Love yourself supremely and be selfish. This recipe is guaranteed to work. In fact, you don't even need all the ingredients to achieve total misery. On the other hand, if misery is not your idea of a good time, then do the exact opposite. If you do, you'll have a hard time feeling even the little bitest blue. And the quote from today comes from Donald Hankey. It says, For most men the world is centered in self, which is misery. To have one's world centered in God is peace. You know what surprises me <laughs> is that much of what we are taught, taught is normal in our culture today is listed in this perfect recipe for misery. Isn't it, wonder, isn't, it, isn't it a wonder then how many people today are not happy, have no peace and no joy? The chief way to have an absolute miserable life is to seek you is to seek yourself and only yourself in every opportunity and every possibility. This is why we are called to model after the life of Christ, because we see in Christ a life that was constantly lived in a way that others benefited from everything that he did. And yet, I would say that Christ enjoyed his time here with us. Maybe not on the cross, but he knew it was worthwhile. But when you look to the life of Christ, you see a life that's ministering to other people. And yet he also sits down and eats with his friends. He also sits down with people he doesn't know so that he can love on them. It is very easy to be a miserable person today. We have everything that we can uh, built around being able to be miserable. We can use social media to only glorify ourselves and to make sure that others are glorifying ourselves. We have television programs that can make us feel important. Everything that we can do, we can do nowadays to only make us the center of attention and when we don't receive that because believe it or not even though social media might make you feel important it is ultimately pointless you're going to be miserable i mean we can just look at well no i'm not going to get off on that period why are we so determined to be miserable might be the way i'm, I'm thinking upon this we work so hard at it anymore. 
We have all these different ways that we can isolate ourselves, and we seem to glorify in doing it. Now, don't get me wrong. Right now, you know, we have to be, you know, we do all the things that we're supposed to be so that we're not spreading this disease. That's not what I'm talking about. But even in the midst of this, there's ways in the midst of quarantines that we can still interact with one, one another. You know, there's long before there was this thing of messaging and text messages and emails and things like that, there was this thing called a phone call. And believe it or not, once upon a time, you didn't know who was calling before you answered the phone. If we just take the time to call somebody else, and not wait to be called, that can be a blessing. And you know what? Surprisingly enough, you'll feel better for doing it. So let's check on one another. That's one way of doing it. How can, else can we serve one another? You know, I like cooking. Maybe, And I know some of you out there are amazing cooks and bakers. Cook something. Take it and drop it off at somebody else. Not for any reason. And don't keep track of whether or not they cook and bring something back to you. Do it for the simple joy that somebody is going to enjoy a meal that you made. Things like that. And you'll be amazed that when you get so caught up in blessing others, that you'll be blessed yourself in doing so. And that there is an inherent joy in doing these things. So today... Who's somebody you can call? Who's somebody that you can bless? Let's start there. Let's move our lives away from misery and instead look at ways that we can bless one another. Holy Father, direct our eyes away from ourselves and help us to see those in our lives that need you. Use us, O oh Lord. In Jesus I pray. Amen.